Hey guys, welcome back to an industry leader interview. Uh, we're going to kick off 2018 really big here. I have the honor to interview with Mr. Will Polston here. So what an amazing way to kick off our industry leader interviews for 2018. It's all about inspiration, motivation, and ready to absolutely smash 2018. So I couldn't have uh, picked a better person for the first interview. Now, I don't want to undersell you. I really don't. So I know we've got to introduce you, but I don't want to undersell you. So I would like, you, would you mind doing a sort of 30 second intro into who you are, what you're about, and sort of achievements is sort of facing some Yeah, of, of course. So, uh, hi, my name's Will Polston and uh, I'm a mindset strategist. I, I have the pleasure of taking people from where they are to where they want to be and I do that by empowering them to unlock their full potential and make it happen. And that, that for me is what it's all about. Um, in terms of my credentials, mm. I, uh, I'm, I'm an accredited master coach, I'm a neuro-linguistic programming master practitioner and uh, I'm a member of the International Coaching Federation, actually the youngest British man in the world to be a member of the, uh, the ICS. Wow, incredible, absolutely, that's inspirational. Make it happen, I, you know, I've been I've been involved with the uh, Elite Network a lot recently with their events, the fantastic events, and Make It Happen is a fantastic company. It's inspiring so many people. Um, so that's what a big part of this interview is gonna be about, is how to get that inspired uh, mental stability, that mindset. So we're gonna learn a bit about Will first, and then we're gonna dive into some more direct questions. So first of all, I read something on about use of you wanted you were following influencers and you thought you could do better than them. You wanted to sort of test what they did. So I just wanted to understand who were those influencers and mentors that inspired you to sort of start testing what you saw. Yeah, so um, ultimately my uh, my, my blueprint to success, as, mm. as, as I call it, and, and by the way, when I talk about success, success is subjective. So everybody has their way of, of defining mm. success, and however they want to define success. Mm. And, um, and and what I wanted to do was fast track that. And my way of doing that was essentially by emulating and learning what other people have done, because everybody's made yeah. mistakes in ways. So you can learn from other people's mistakes, or you can learn why they're doing things in particular ways, and it enables you to sort of upskill a lot quicker. Um, so in the early days, it was like I, I would I would learn from anybody, you know, in, in, whether it was my managers, whether it was colleagues of mine that were better at what I did, and that's gone on to evolve, and, and I still apply that same principle now. So if I want to. To, to lose weight, then I'll find someone who's in really good shape and I'll learn what they want to do. Yeah. If, I, if I want to learn from somebody that's um, incredibly mentally resilient, then I'll learn from somebody who's mentally resilient. If I want to learn from somebody who's, who's great in business, I'll learn from somebody who's great in business. And I look to, to find all of the top people, so I don't just take one person's mm. methodology, I, I look for a, a number of key players across mm. the board and look for all of their best little bits and, and combine yeah. that with a, a combination of, of, uh, of my own. So. I like that because I feel like it, it can feel like it's so hard to become successful. I know you said subjective, but success in business. And I feel like it's just such a simple pull way of looking at it. Like if you want to achieve that, just go and embody that. Embody that person, look at what they do. I think it's just a really quite refreshing way to look at success. So if you, if you want to achieve something in business, I think that's so refreshing. Like, just go copy something. It's like go sort of do it your own way or go understand the best way. Yeah, le learn from them. Ultimately. Yeah, learn, learn, learn from them. That's what it's about. Yeah, yeah. It's about that absolute hope. So, um, now I know you met Tony Robbins, um, which hopefully one day I do meet, um, and I know that was a big part of the story of you becoming mm. who you are today. So, do you want to just touch on that a little bit? Because I feel like we need to. Yeah. So I, I went to. Uh, so I'd, I'd always been. I say always. From for about four or five years, I've been heavily involved and in, in interested in personal development, and then I went to a, an event. Uh, called Unleash the Power Within, which is a Tony Robbins event about six years ago now, and had what I call my lightning moment, which is where I realised at that very point that what I'd been doing and, and thinking my whole life wasn't about what it was really about, and there was a much bigger picture mm -hmm. to, uh, to to play with. And um, and and yeah, at that at that point, it was it was it was life changing for me, and mm -hmm. have been since. And then last year, I had the pleasure of being invited out as a personal guest of, of Tony and his wife to one of his events over in America. Which was cool, and uh, and then yeah, getting to to, to have a, a couple of words with the big man, uh, which was which was pretty cool. Wow, that's incredible! It's a life changing episode. Hopefully, I get the opportunity one day to meet him myself. Um, and I think that rolled into so we sort of understood how you built and uh, made Will Polston today. So, what is your current focus for today? Now we know sort of how you've been built. What is your focus today? 
in terms of um, what, from a from a growing perspective? Uh, yeah. So moving your business for and what is your main focus in? I guess in life and business, I would have thought it's quite yeah. quite similar. Yeah, very much. I mean, I, I I'm I'm very grateful in that I've created a life where my life and business is very much combined mm. and uh, and yet want to continue to, to grow that. Mm. We've spent a lot of time and energy and effort creating platforms over the last couple of years to enable people to thrive. Um, my ultimate goal, my purpose is to empower as many people as I can to unlock yeah. their full potential and make it happen yeah. and we've created lots of different vehicles in order for that to happen now mm. so it's about creating awareness, making people aware we're not going to be for everybody, not if we're not going to be everybody's cup of tea which yeah. is fine mm. but those that we are we want to make sure as many of them know yeah. about it as possible to, to be able to be a part of it. Fantastic, no I love it. So now we've learned more about Will, we've understood sort of where you come from and sort of what's inspired you now want to go for the more direct questions of where people can really take little bits from this and really go and implement that. So I think we start and start with um, how do you gain, and this is quite an open question, but how do you gain clarity of what you want to achieve in, in, in life? Is there, it's, is there sort of like a simple model that you can go to or is there some sort of few steps that you can really get, gain clarity of what you want to achieve in business and life? Yeah, definitely. So in, in order to identify what you want is mm. just dream. Right, is, is, is just put it out there. Think as, as as big and as crazy as you want, right? Because you can make that your ultimate goal. My my belief is, if you shoot for the the stars, you hit the moon. You shoot for the moon, you hit the lamppost, right? So dream big. <laughs> if you strive for for mastery, you might settle at excellence. But yeah. if you strive for good, you'll get average. You know, yeah. so it's about shooting as high as you possibly yeah. can. And if you fall short, it is, it is what it is. So um, that that's what I've. I sort of strive towards, and uh, and that's certainly something I recommend people to do. And then, how you make that happen? The easiest way to do that is to go, oh, "Well, I've got this dream, I've got this vision, but I don't know how. What's the first step that I take?" Is what I say is quite often. If you're thinking about the first step, you're thinking about it wrong. Think about what the end step is, the end goal, and work backwards, reverse engineer it to work out what the first step is. Yeah, I've heard that a few times before, and that's definitely that's powerful for sure. Um, I definitely need to implement that for my next five year strategy. So that's a, that's a great uh, piece of uh, tips there to take away. Um, so say you've got your clarity, you've got your dream, and even when it's a dream, I think it can still be tough to grind every day out. Because um, like, I love what I do, but there are those days where it goes like, oh, I don't really want to work. It's how, what, what are those good daily habits to maintain that motivation every single day? Oh, wow. Um, there's, there's so many. Um, but for me, the, the key ones are like health, you know, mm. focus on your health is, is really important. So eating more, drinking more, exercising. Mm. Um, but then on, on top of that, active appreciation, gratitude is just what you focus on, you feel. So just writing out what you're grateful for, 10 things you're grateful mm. for every single day, just to start the day to get you focused on the good, because there will be challenging times, there mm. will be difficult, yeah. uh, difficult times, but there's a few things worth remembering. Life happens for you, not to you. Mm. And, um, that, that, that plays a massive role in, in, in what goes on and of course it, when, when you're focusing on the, the positives you're focusing on the good things it, it just sets your your whole frequency for the day in terms mm. of what you can, you can go through and, and deal with and it's it's worth having in the back of your mind from struggle comes growth yeah you know so if everything wasn't if it wasn't challenging you're not going to grow if you were if you, when you train the gym for example when you're exercising you're making all these little micro tears in your muscle mm. and, and that enables the muscle to be able to grow so yeah, yeah. i think that's really strong what you said because i've Gone, obviously you'll know for business it can come have really tough times and it can really affect your mental health and um, it was a quote it was from Stephen Bartlett and he was saying whenever you're in your roughest times you've got to think about this is when you're learning the most and that is what got me through it was that I realised this is my learning process I will look back on this and I'll think that is why I do this now and that's what got me through it so I think that bit if you, if you so were to plot out your life and you were to plot your, if you were to sort of time across the bottom and an axis of like your highs and lows across here you were to plot out your lows to your highs almost every low that you've had in your life mm. and then the highs are correlated in some mm. way so you wouldn't have had the high if it wasn't for that low yeah which sure. when, you, when you look back at it in that respect it makes the lows when you're in them a little bit easier to, to deal yeah, with it doesn't absolutely. make them easier at the time I yeah, get that but the, 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 the possibility of the great that's going to come out of it mm. is it's always encouraging absolutely no Absolutely, that really did help me. That's absolutely amazing. Um, and going, obviously, you've done the good habits. How would you, because this is more one for me now, is how do you break those bad habits? Because I definitely have, what is your sort of Okay, so 
in, in order for a, a, a habit to happen, three things have to take place. There has to be a trigger, there has to be a routine, and there has to be a reward. Right, so the reason you have any form of habit is because you've got a trigger, you've got a routine, you get into, and you've got a reward. So the first thing is trying to identify what the trigger is. If you can get rid of the trigger, then it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, how do you get out of the routine again? Well, you, once you become aware of what the trigger is, you can become aware of what the routine is, and then you can start to to break that down by interrupting that process. Mm. So, is there something in particular that you struggle with? Yeah. So, I mean, I think probably one of the most standard ones is getting up. Okay. On time, I think that's probably one. Um, I will. I'm happy to work late hours. It doesn't bother me. But um, get. I would like to get up at a good time, at a respectable time, really, and start with those Yeah. So again, sleep is, is something for a lot of people. What I will say is everybody's different. I'm a morning person, but not everybody is. Yeah. Like this whole five a.m. club. I, I'm a five a.m. person, mm, right? Yeah. But not every day. No. Um, it isn't something that's a necessity, but it does help. So, for example, if you want to get up earlier, well. Have you had enough sleep? Could you go to bed earlier than like mm-hmm. before? Yeah. For example, um, are, are you eating well enough? Because the reason you sleep is your body's recovering. So are you fueling your body well enough? Are you are you over taking too much caffeine? Mm-hmm. Are you uh, not exercising enough? Those types of mm-hmm. things all play a role. And what could be the trigger? And then it's obviously getting up. Yeah. Obviously, the, the obvious one is getting an alarm clock. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a trigger to get you up. Yeah, but even then, you can just press snooze, and that's. And the snooze button on the Apple phones are even bigger now for some reason. Yeah, put the phone on the other side of the room. Yeah, no, that's, a, I've heard that one, but I've never implemented it. Yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, I need to implement that for sure. Um, yeah, so the next one, close to wrapping this up, is how would you, because I know you're very big on mindset, really big on mindset, I feel like I a lot of this what you've said, of mindset, like the positive affirmation, I love that from here. Um, that, how would you create that? Mindset that's going to be this much to me. I'm sure there's a lot of answers to that. There's health, and stuff, but have you got any sort of pointers of uh, you put to creating that your mindset for 2018? Sure. Um, what would be the thing for to really kill 2018. Okay, so we spoke earlier about creating a vision and dreaming and dreaming mm. big. So what what I would say is dream big, identify what your ultimate goal is, work that backwards, a 10 year, five year, three year, one year, what's that look like at the end of a year? Mm-hmm. And then chunk it down even smaller. So right, so that's what I want in a year. What am I gonna do in 90 days? So what's gonna happen? Well, where am I gonna be at the end of March, for example? Then break that down for the month and break it down for weeks. So then what you're doing is you're constantly, you can go through and you can, you can identify your progress as you're working through to see how well you're doing. Right, okay, yeah, that's it. And I think a huge part of that is, someone you mentioned with you recently, is don't keep it all in your head, write it down, mm. because you'll lie to yourself. And yeah. I read a book on how you, the reasoning is quite flawed in the mind. So I think writing it down is a good point as well. Yeah, definitely. Exactly your plan, because you can't change what you're doing, I'm sure. 100%, uh, definitely, 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 yeah. definitely writing it down. Um, yeah, so just find two questions. So I know we've gone through all that. So how does do people do all the above when they're starting out? And I know I've sort of had perceptions of business and sort of you can be very neglectful at the start of business because you've got to learn a lot. Mm. I'm still very young in business. I know I have the experience so many people doing business. Um, so how do you sort of push yourself forward to achieve these and get the right mindset when you might be neglectful of common things in business? Okay, um, great question. So the, if I'm understanding this is right, it's people that are just starting out, yeah. they don't really know what they're doing, yeah. there's loads to learn, how do they yeah. know what to focus on? Yeah how, do they know? yeah, how do they not focus on them, stay focused on the right thing because obviously experience is such a key thing and at the end of the day you don't get it without just doing it. Something. So. Yeah, um, it's, it's a, a very difficult question to answer. Mm. What I would say is that what a lot of people have a tendency to not do is focus on sales, and they get so caught up with how things should look and the operations mm. side of things. And I made this mistake at points. Um, so to, to remember to focus on sales is something mm. that is, is really important, rather than making yeah. sure everything's perfect. Yeah would be one thing and the other thing is, is getting around like-minded people you know you don't have to read every book in the library but you can learn very very quickly from people that have been there and done it so if you're starting out find someone that's even a year ahead of you yeah because you can learn from them that's it particularly if they're in a similar industry mm. for sure 
Absolutely, yeah, and I found that from networking around events myself, that just connecting people that are a few years ahead of me and what I do, but I've learned so much from them. It's really helpful with going forward. Um, so just wrapping up now, just is there anything you want, any sort of final tips you would give to anyone on just generally a business or like anything you tend to leave in conversations or maybe the last talk you always like to say something that's big that people need to hear? Uh, I, I think um, it's worth remembering that anything that you want to do, so I talk about a six step formula to success and this is something you can apply to any area of life. So the very first thing is know your outcomes, know what it is that you want to get to. Number two reason is know why you want them. The only reason we achieve any goal in life is to do one thing and one thing only and that's change the way that we feel. So know why you want to do it because that's what's going to carry you through in those difficult times. Uh, the third thing is to take the action, take the action to strive for it, actually put in the effort to get there. The fourth thing is check the results you're getting. You can have this vision, you can know why you can be taking the action, but if you're not checking in with your results and seeing, like, am I getting closer to where I'm going to get to or am I actually getting further away, yeah. then you're going to find yourself in a difficult situation. And then if you are getting further away, then tweak the approach. You don't have to change the goal. The goal can always stay mm. the same, but how you get to the goal is something that you can tweak. Mm. And the last one is get accountable. Be accountable to somebody. Have right, somebody right. that's going to gonna to enable you to stay accountable because the problem that, that you've got and the problem yeah. that you've got watching this at home <laughs> yeah. is that you're a liar yeah okay you're a liar you will lie to yourself over and over yeah, and over no, again I, right yeah, no, yeah. Um, but we've been brought up to be conditioned to be accountable when we're born we're accountable to our parents we're to school we're accountable to our teachers we're to work we're accountable to our bosses then we go into the big wide world we're going to do something for ourselves and we wonder why it doesn't get yeah. done and it's because we're not being held accountable and that's it that's huge for me as well. Funny you mentioned that because I've literally just moved into co working space because I want to be more accountable. Because I was working at home and it just got to the stage where I wasn't being productive. It was just, it wasn't right. So now I want to be around people. So it's almost just being around other people working. Like I would feel guilty if I was not working. And I feel like telling them I'm going to get a client today, I'm going to do this call. I, that's something I literally just uh, implemented right to this. So it's really quite fresh. That's quite really Thank you very much. For Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. I really appreciate that idea. My pleasure. And uh, if you want to find me, I'll obviously put all those profiles and do go in there and make it happen. It's a really inspirational company. And if you want to go to any network groups, the Link Network is fantastic for you. Um, I, I know you're in Leeds, you're in London. Leeds, currently Leeds, Chelmsford, uh, Manchester, Newcastle. Um, it seems to be Sheffield, yeah. there's a few other locations as well. So, Fantastic, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And we'll, we'll drop that down there as well, promote that as well. But thank you very much, guys. It was an amazing interview to kick off 2018. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, please do follow me on our social media at Scott Mears on YouTube, where you are now, at Scott Mears underscore on Twitter, and at Scott Mears Entrepreneur on Facebook. Thank you very much, guys. Until next time.